Welcome back to part three, the transformation of salvation. We're looking primarily at Romans, the sixth chapter. In Romans chapter six, let's continue in verse four. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. We've already seen in salvation, as we're transformed by the power of our Lord and Savior, as he saves us, has saved, is saving, will save. We see it, evidence of God's work in our lives in the past, the present, and the future, as we've seen from God's word. Thus, in Romans, the sixth chapter, in salvation and the transformation of salvation, we see that we are dead in Christ, buried in Christ, but we're also raised to walk in newness of life. Thus, we have a brand new life and a brand new meaning for living after Jesus Christ has saved us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which deals with our Lord's resurrection and our victory in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, there in verse 57, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, having received him as our Lord and Savior, through his work, not ours, it's a free gift, lest any man should boast, Ephesians chapter 2, we are in Christ already victorious through him, sharing in his finished work, his death, his burial, his resurrection, as seen here. Other passages deal with the Lord's ascension and the fact that he's seated at the right hand of God. <clears throat> Notice that in Christ we're raised to walk in newness of life. Now, life here is the general word that can also be used for physical life. It's zoe. I know in English, anyone named that usually is zoe, but in Greek, or other pronunciations, but in Greek, it's zoe, to be physically alive. But in this case, it is spiritually alive. Not only are we raised to walk in a new life, but it is the newness of life spiritually. We are alive in a new state of being after God saves us. We are a different being. Uh, some translations a few years ago indicates in those passages that we are a new race of men. New creatures it is also a good way to explain that. Spiritually alive in Christ, sharing in his resurrection. Yes. Now, in that, does that mean a future bodily resurrection? Yes, we've seen that. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, 13 and following. Is that an eternal home in heaven? Yes, we saw that in weeks before. But these things are all in the future. What about now? Well, now, not only are our sins forgiven, as we've covered in 1 John 1, 9, we've been cleansed of all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9, but for now, we're raised to walk in newness of life. God gives us a new way of living after he saves us. This is not for a few Christians. This is for every Christian. Years ago, someone wanted to help in knowing how to change the tire on their vehicle. And they were a little bit curious because they, their vehicle did not have a trunk. And it didn't have a trunk and couldn't see a tire and uh, opened everything up and I said do you see that fitting right there at the back of your vehicle yes I said this unusual looking tool right here you put that in there and start spinning it and as you spin that the tire which is underneath your vehicle will be slowly lowered and lo and behold there was a tire, never been used, brand new, ready to go. They had a new tire, wasn't one of those donut spares, those are scary. It was a regulation size tire, and they didn't know that they have it. Well, there are many things that Christians have in salvation that God has provided for every Christian. Not only do we need to know it, studying the Word of God with the Holy Spirit helping us learn and understand the Word of God, but also filling us and allowing us to walk in His power, victorious in Jesus, with these things that God has already promised, not to a few Christians, but it is available to 
all Christians. God's resurrection power is available to all Christians. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, which is not like a spare tire. It never should we look at being filled with the Holy Spirit as a parachute just for emergencies. Or if we're out in the truck and all of a sudden we've got it in two-wheel drive and we get it stuck, and in the old days it was a little bit trickier than it is now with a lot of the uh, aspects of electronic ways of changing that. After you got stuck, okay, now we'll put it in four-wheel drive. No, our new life in Christ is not just used as a spare tire or a parachute for emergencies or, oh no, we have to put all the wheels now in gear. No, a new life in Christ should be used at all times, and we should walk in the newness of life at all times in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old things have passed away, raised to walk in newness of life. If this is true, then the old things have passed away. Leave them alone. Don't go there. Trust God to give us victory over sin, temptation, all of these aspects. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. God has given us a new state of being. God has given us a new reason for living, a new purpose for living. He's given us his own spirit, his Holy Spirit, to fill us, to teach us and to let us understand these marvelous truths of God and to walk in them. Not just occasionally, not only in worship, but in worship as in defined in Romans the 12th chapter, verse 1. Worship that is continual and is all the things that we do to serve and to love God. Every Christian was raised to walk in newness of life, Romans the 4th chapter. Thus, as last week we saw God transform James and Peter and Paul, we see this week that God will transform us and has made all the provisions for our transformation, just like he did for James and Peter and Paul. God has provided those wonderful things in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We're not apostles, no, but notice the marvelous promises there in Romans, the fourth chapter, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And these are indeed for all Christians. This week, take out your Bible. You can continue reading in there in Romans, the fourth chapter, for we have many more verses to go there. Explore God's word about our new life in Christ and the marvelous victories and what it means in Christ to be dead, buried, and raised to walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Father, we're very thankful for the free gift of salvation you give to all who call upon you. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful gift. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. It is a free gift, and we thank you, Father, for that. Let us understand this gift of salvation, what you have already done in the past in your finished work, what you are doing in our lives today, and we even look forward to what you will do in the future. We thank you for all of these things, this marvelous gift of salvation and the transformation you bring about in your children, in us, as we walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.